Kusile Power Stations, three units are expected to be operational by around the 24th of December this year. This was announced by the Minister of Electricity, Dr. Jose Enzo Ramachopa, during his weekly media briefings on the progress being made on the government's energy action plan. The minister also announced that for the month of July, there has been an improvement in generation capacity of 1,100 megawatts. This as the country is experiencing cold weather. Now, the Energy Action Plan was announced by President Cyril Ramaphosa a year ago as a bold set of actions to address load shedding and achieve energy security. To talk more about the progress that has been made by the Energy Action Plan, we are joined by Professor of Physics Harmut Winkler from the University of Johannesburg. Professor, thanks for joining us. Good to have you. Oh, morning. Good morning. So using the, the May 2023, the month we've had to look back at as a baseline, the, the Minister of Electricity, Dr. Ramachopa, yesterday said that there has been an improvement of generation capacity by about 1,100 megawatts. So look at the analysis, look at the numbers. What do you make of it? Is there significant progress there? Uh, certainly this winter has been better for the country than it had been projected by most analysts, me included. Uh, I expect that, and it might still happen, that at some point we we'll, uh, might be forced to go to uh, stage eight load shedding. Uh, but so far we've stuck to stage six. So that's certainly uh, uh, good news. It's better than expected. And I think one just needs to try and understand uh, what this is uh, about, why this is happening. Uh, part of the reason is probably that they've managed to get a, a little bit of a better grip on the, on the breakdowns at the various uh, Eskom power station, but I think there are a couple of other factors as well. So uh, things could be worse. Uh, at the same time, I don't think we're out of the woods yet. Uh, I, I think uh, uh, the public shouldn't be surprised that maybe uh, it, when it's least expected in a few weeks from now, maybe we do get go, go down to even as far as stage eight. It could all still happen. Yeah. Uh, also, there are no quick fixes to the electricity crisis in this country. So. Um, despite of uh, the situation now looking a little bit rosier than it did, say, three months ago, I, I think we, we're still going to be having lots of power problems for at least five years. So I want to just go back a little bit. You were saying that, you know, there were perhaps, you know, other, other reasons as to, as to why we saw the, the, the power a little bit more stable than, than before. Tell us why. What, what, what do you think is behind this? Yes, well, it, one thing I've noticed is that the overall uh, demand of electricity from Eskom it doesn't seem to be quite as high on average than it was last year. That's probably partly due to the fact that a lot of uh, uh, private uh, users, uh, including some rather big ones uh, like shopping malls or major companies like uh, uh, breweries and so on, have uh, started making their own plans. They started setting up their own uh, solar power plants, either on their roofs or, or, or elsewhere. And I think this is starting to make a little bit of a dent, but at the same time, it, it, that alone cannot explain uh, everything. Mm -hmm. I think uh, or what's also helped is that there seems to be less uh, evidence that there's any sabotage happening right now. There probably still is some, but I think it's a little bit better. Now, again, there could be various reasons for it. Either the, uh, the policing is, uh, is becoming uh, uh, better at, 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 at uh, stopping this sort of activity, uh, or for some reason or other, uh, the, the people responsible for this are feeling more watched and are, are just keeping a little bit lower, uh, a, a little bit of a lower profile than normal. But uh, I think those are the, the sort of uh, factors which are playing a, a part here. Yeah, all right. Um, so, so as most of the, the country experiences a, a very cold winter, we're seeing obviously mm. a, a snap in the temperature again. ESCOM appealing to public to reduce energy demand um, and to alleviate pressure on the system and avoid higher stages of load shedding. The, the minister said that Gauteng accounts for the 25% of the increase in energy surge due to the cold winter. How much does this increase have to do with aging infrastructure and of course population growth as well? Uh, as far as the growth is co concerned, I think it is uh, uh, fair to say that uh, uh, probably about 25% of the, the country does live in, in and uh, around about Gauteng. So uh, yes, so uh, whatever happens in Gauteng is fairly crucial. So if uh, the cold weather gets here, then you will see a, a spike in demand. I expect today is going to be uh, pretty uh, high. So uh, possibly expect an announcement for a slightly higher stages of load shedding later today. Uh, but um, 
as far as the infrastructure uh, breaking down, yes, that's of course is is, is uh, um, very problematic for uh, for the for the local users and that. Oddly enough, it might actually assist in keeping general stages of load chilling down because if certain suburbs are out for a whole day, it just means uh, uh, Eskom is using or needing to supply less uh, electricity. Mm. But uh, along with many other things around uh, Gauteng, uh, like the roads, uh, the electricity infrastructure is in, in dire need of uh, upgrades in, in, in a lot of places. Also, load chilling itself doesn't help this continual switching on and switching off of equipment. Uh, does uh, uh, always lead to greater potential for bro uh, problems, breakdowns. Uh, we've also had uh, instances of cable theft during load shedding. I think there were reports recently of, of uh, uh, dead bodies being found uh, in, in uh, uh, various substations. So it, it, it's, uh, it's uh, yes, so Gauteng and, and the cold weather at the moment, yes, this is uh, one of the critical times. But at the same time, we're almost uh, out of winter now. This yeah. could be... Last snap, a real snap of cold weather. So overall, I think we've we've come through the winter much better than I, I would have expected. Absolutely, but listen, it doesn't it doesn't mean anything, winter or not winter. Still yeah. in summer, we were experiencing stage six load shedding back yes. to back. So I've, I've begun to realise that the weather is just one aspect of many other things. Money, funding, big challenge, huge challenge. And I mean, in fact, yesterday when we heard some of the numbers being thrown around, um, this was quite scary. I mean, the utility saying that it, it, it was expecting to require 100 billion rand for the 2025 financial year and close to 170 billion rand by 2029, as their balance sheet will not be sufficient without these funds. I mean, accelerating private investment in generation capacity is one of the key interventions in this energy action plan. But I mean, where is this money going to come from? What is the solution for ESCOM? Uh, yes, I think that the general problem is that ESCOM uh, has always been under uh, under serious challenge. Their debt had gone up uh, uh, to uh, unmanageable levels, which is why they turned to government. Uh, and, and yes, and ESCOM does need to uh, uh, keep on upgrading its grid. Uh, things change, this would be part of, of normal operation. But I think what's also made a big dent in, in, in uh, Eskom's budget is this uh, reliance on, on diesel. Uh, even now, one of the other things that has been happening throughout the winter is that uh, the, uh, the, uh, the gas power station, which work or operate on diesel, uh, they've been working, they're supposed to be used in emergency situations only uh, because the gas and diesel it, it, it is so expensive. Uh, but they've been using it um, almost uh, continuously uh, to see us through the various uh, uh, stages of load shedding. And already uh, now, uh, Eskom has used up uh, something like half of the, of the money that was allocated to them from, uh, from uh, uh, the end of March onwards so, uh, for the year. So it, it's, it's clearly a very expensive exercise and I, 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 it's, it's something which is going to hurt the country. Where exactly the, the money is going to come from, I don't know. The other uh, problem is that as people start making alternative arrangements, uh, these are often the uh, Eskom's best customers. Mm -hmm. uh, so Eskom is also going to increasingly lose uh, 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 or gain less, less income uh, from uh, the sale of electricity. Huh. A big worry and a very big challenge, as you say, mm -hmm. not for Eskom, but for the country and for, for us, the citizens. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I want to get your views on some of the, the, the updates that the minister gave on uh, projects and execution in project generation capacity to deliver 2,335 megawatts of new grid capacity. So he mentioned the, um, the areas in Uppington that was 400 kilovolts, I think, and Juno Gromis also the same amount, uh, a 400 kV line. What are your impression on these improvements? I mean, ha have you seen these making an impact? Uh well, uh, those are areas in the Northern Cape where uh, the best potential exists for solar power and to some degree for wind power. And uh, at the moment, the, the electricity production in the country is, is, is focused, is concentrated in Pumalanga because that's where the coal plants uh, generally are. So if you do want to uh, start generating a greater fraction of your electricity in, in these other parts, you just need to uh, make the grids uh, able to, uh, to deal with those as well. And uh, so it's, uh, uh, those are going to have to happen at some point. They're not going to happen uh, terribly fast. I know the one on the uh, near Uppington people have been working on uh, already. So that one, I think, is going to assist. But there's, there's just going to have to be an ongoing thing, especially areas like the Eastern Cape. 
uh, Western Cape, uh, there they, uh, where the best potential for wind farms is. At the same time, Eskom could adopt another strategy. As much as uh, those uh, parts of the country that I mentioned are, are, are the, uh, the best one for solar and wind, there's nothing stopping one from building solar and wind plants in the east of the country. It's mm -hmm. still, by international standards, exceptionally good uh, uh, conditions uh, that we experience there. Yeah. So uh, they should be looking at, at that as well. Uh, the other aspect is, is uh, as far as funding is concerned, there's uh, various projects that are going to cost a lot, like the, the, the fixing of, of Kusile, um, which you mentioned earlier, the, the minister said should be finished by 24th of December. If they really manage that, I think they have done exceptionally well. Uh, given how such mega projects tend to uh, work out, I wouldn't be surprised if that stretches well into next year. Yeah. Uh, same with the Kuber nuclear power pl uh, plant uh, 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 life extension project. That's already uh, turning out a lot more expensive and taking a lot more time than uh, we'd been t uh, originally been told, which is again not surprising. It's just how it's part for the course. To happen I suppose it is. <laughs> and I mean, on Friday we mm. also saw uh, Nursa um, approving the operating license for the National Transmission Company of South Africa. That's the NTC. Two license still oper uh, 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 licensing. Um, uh, they still outstanding. So we're waiting on that one. But just just finally, mm. as I let you go. Are you feeling more confident? Should we feel more confident that that something is actually happening? Or is it just the fact that South Africans have decided, well, we're going on our own and we're making things work on our own? Can we, we, we look and find optimism in ESCOM or is it just that South Africans are making it work for themselves? It's, it's a bit of both. Uh, it's, uh, you cannot turn a company like Eskom around in, in a matter of days or months, which is, it seems to be what the public uh, uh, is, is expecting. It, it, it's just not going to happen. It doesn't matter who you put on the board, who you put in the, in the management and, and, and how many people you, uh, you recruit. Uh, so Eskom's turnaround, it, it, I think the first, their priority should be just to stabilize the situation, which I, from what I've seen in the last few months, they, I think they're on course uh, for that. Until now, they had been getting worse and worse every year. So uh, they'll only start improving uh, uh, it, it, so that we'll see a real difference. Uh, in, not this year, maybe two or three years' time. Uh, then we'll be able to, to see whether they've been successful. That, But the, the challenges are not going to go away. Uh, the equipment is going to carry on breaking down and, and customers are going to uh, start, uh, not going to start, they're going to continue making alternative arrangements. Uh, the rooftop solar is here to stay and it's going to get bigger. That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. Prof, thank you. Thanks so much for talking to us this okay. morning. Uh, Professor of Physics, Har uh, of Physics, Hartmut Winkler from the University of Johannesburg, talking to us about uh, what the uh, Minister of Electricity, Dr. Jose Enzo Ramachopo's media briefing uh, and some of the things that came out of it in terms of the Energy Action Plan.